Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to my tutorial on how to use the motion graph in After Effects. I recommend that you watch my introduction to After Effects and also my lesson on easing before you watch this one. So you'll be familiar with all the stuff that I'm talking about. So in the past, we've used keyframes to determine how things move. And we've also used easing to automate the temporal interpolation. Temporal means time. So temporal interpolation is how fast or slow things go from A to B. So do they speed up or do they slow down? Spatial interpolation is what direction do things go in? And do they move along a curve or do they move in a straight line? So if you think spatial is space and temporal is time. I've got a composition here that's 720p and I've got my fish PNG, which you might be familiar with by now. I'm gonna press S for scale to shrink that down a little bit. And I'm gonna press P for position and I'm gonna click on the stopwatch, move through time, and then move my fish over to the other side of the screen. So we've got a linear animation of the fish moving from the left to the right. Nice and simple. So in the past, we've looked at eases and seen how they can automatically adjust how fast or slow something goes. Remember, that's temporal. But we can also use something called the motion graph to get bespoke results and edit the way something moves through time. So I'm going to click on my position parameter and then I'm going to click on this little button for the graph editor. When I do that, I'll get this little graph and it shows that things are moving at a uniform speed all the way through. They're not speeding up or slowing down. This is zero pixels a second. Our animation is moving at about 184 pixels per second all the way through. But you can see the graph goes all the way up to 3,500. But we can scale it down if you want using the mouse wheel. But we're not using any we're not going at speeds this fast, we're just going at one uniform speed all the way through. So with the temporal graph, what you can do is you can move either of these points. This is point B on the right hand side and this is point A on the left hand side. So I'm just going to try having a go moving them around. If I start moving this one, we can see that our graph starts going very quickly at the beginning. It's going at 3000 pixels a second. And it gradually slows down to about 10 as we go towards the end. And then it picks up very slightly at the end. So maybe I'll pull this one down. There we go. And let's see what that looks like. I'm going to press the zero on the numeric keypad, or you can press the RAM preview button here. So you can see it moves very quickly at the beginning, and then it slows down at the end, like so. So if I wanted it to speed up at the beginning and end, I could pull the end value up to 3000 as well. So it's just going slowly in the middle and it's going fast at the beginning and end. So let's take a look at what that looks like. There we go. Or if I pulled both of them down to the bottom, you can see it rises up in the middle. So it's going fastest in the middle, it's going about 230 pixels a second and it's going slow at the beginning and end. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So slow, speeding up, slowing down. So there you go. That's the temporal graph. You can do a lot with it. You could tweak eases that you've created automatically or you could do them completely manually if you want. So that's all temporal interpolation. Let's take a look at how we can edit spatial interpolation with the graph. I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to delete all that position animation. I'm going to press S for scale. I'm going to position my fish right here in the center. And I'm just going to keyframe some scale animation. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch, move through time, five seconds. And I'm going to make the fish loads bigger. So we've now got a nice linear animation of the fish moving from big to small. So that's a spatial animation. It's not temporal, 
It's about how big or small it is, not how fast or slow it's going. And the cool thing about the motion graph is it'll automatically detect what sort of animation it thinks you want to do. So down in this window here, we've got auto select graph type. So it's assumed that we want the spatial graph for this, not the temporal one. So if we wanted to edit the temporal graph, we'd have to go down to speed graph. And you can see that changes the graph so that it reflects speed instead of scale. Or we could choose value graph so it would show us our scale. But we'll leave it on auto select because it's done a pretty good job so far. So you can see these are two linear keyframes. It's moving from 44% to 161% in a straight line upwards. So we can move this one up here. So it moved from 44% to, uh, let's see, 2,953%. But it's still linear. It's moving in a linear way between both of those sizes. So I'm going to pull that back down so that it's more like 160 where it was before. Or I could just undo. There we go. So let's see what happens when we change these from linear keyframes to Bezier keyframes. I'm going to hold down the Alt key on the PC or Option on the Mac and click on both of these keyframes. And you can see the cursor changes. And I've now converted both of those keyframes into Bezier keyframes rather than linear ones. And that enables me to tweak this graph so that it goes from being small to really big back to its final size of 160. So it's kind of overshooting the 160 by quite a lot and going up to sort of 500% and then it's snapping back to where we want it to be at the end. So that's a completely different animation to the one we started with. Or we could have it very small at the beginning, moving very gradually upwards, overshooting the target, and then snapping back at the end. So you can see the graph goes slowly upwards and then back down to its final value there. So that's spatial interpolation in the motion graph. That's editing the size of something. So let's just do a RAM preview to take a look at what that looks like. So it's getting really big and then it snaps back into place. So that's a bit more of an organic animation. And it looks completely different to the linear animation that we started off with. So that's the motion graph. Have a go yourself with temporal and spatial interpolation and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Colouring and Activity Book and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike and are well worth checking out.